So just uh, kind of based on these first few practices you've been through, what do you see your offense kind of looking like here? Um, what, what are you kind of working on? Not really that far down the line. Obviously, working on more just um, execution, uh, angles of screens, reads, things of that nature. A lot of breakdown stuff, just trying to get into the flow, trying to get a, a lot of shots, a lot of decision making and you know reads within things more than anything then you you try to concept be able to get them to be able to conceptualize everything depending on what's going on whether like you're playing through the dribble or you're playing through the post up or you're playing through ball screens or moving the ball or screens away from you know the basketball so like just the, the overall understanding of what you want to do offensively so uh, obviously we'll do a lot of the, the same things in the past we won't have as much in a certain area as other years, but then like being pretty open to it. So like you, you just kind of let the competition take you where it's going to be. Obviously, the people that have been highly successful that return, you got you know you have your your feel and your understanding that obviously you're going to have the ball in Braden Smith's hands a lot. Fletcher Lawyer is going to you know get more stuff for actions. Trey Kaufman ran um, has proven that he can score this back to the basket. I think he can do a little bit more than that. And he didn't get that opportunity with the talent level that we had and the different guys that we had. Um, so like his usage, I would think, would go up. And then we have some young guys that are very talented. We have some guys that played roles last year that, that they, those, those could increase. I don't like to really talk about somebody's role in June. I think it's something you earn and, and something you work towards. And then you, you just got to you know, kind of get things figured out. And everybody's a rebounder. Everybody's a sprinter. You know, everybody's a defender. So like there's no difference along those lines, even though there's some differences in how you have to guard people. So can you kind of get creative with those two wings, uh, and miles. Yeah, you can, can run you different, different stuff. stuff. Yeah, stuff for lobs, you know, for pin downs. You know, I, I think their ability to do other things will probably help us more. Just kind of the in between things of games, you know, sprinting the floor, getting on the offensive glass, getting 50-50 balls, just use them what the Lord gave you. Like you can't sit there and be long and athletic and not be able to rebound. Like you just, you know, you got to put it to work. And so like those are the type of things, you know, both of those guys can shoot the basketball um, and make some plays for us offensively. But uh, it's going to be the, the, the other things that complete them as a player that's really going to help us. Trey talked last week about Having more space to work, which obviously last year with, right. with Zach in there, he didn't have much space. Yeah. Is that maybe more of his game where he's got more room to work and, and do some things? Uh, yeah, it depends on who he's with, too. Like sometimes, like not having enough space, but then, you know, you don't have the same attention either, right? So the spacing's not as good, but while Zach was on the floor, they really weren't too worried about him, right? And now they'll get more worried about you. So it changes a little bit as they might double a little bit more on you or scrape on the ball side with you. But I think it depends on who he's with. If we ultimately go small and he's our center, then I think he has a lot of space. Like if he's in there and he's with, you know, Wilberg or he's with Daniel Jacobson or, you know, one of those bigger centers, like, you know, you're right back into the, the fold in terms of the way it was before. Um, but yeah, like I, I think, you know, he's, he's got a chance to have a you know, an all-conference type season. I think he can really score the basketball. And he just hasn't been as consistent because, you know, you don't have as consistent minutes. Obviously, more this past year he started. But, um, you know, you're still not playing through your mistakes, you know, as, as, as you would like, as Braden does or Fletch does or Zach did or, you know, the guys that play 25 to 35 minutes. I know that you know, just got here, but how beneficial was that international experience? And you've had guys in the, right. in the past uh, where he wasn't here, but he's also playing games against high level competition. Yeah, it's no different than like going to Brewster and starting for Brewster and then playing, you know, one of the best schedules in the country and knowing that you belong. I think that gave him a lot of confidence to, to go to USA and to compete and play and then to be their starting center. Um, and, and make the all tournament team with them. I mean, that just gives you more confidence to know you're one of the best players in the world at your age. And um, so, yeah, you know, we're excited about it. Like, his, uh, it, it's on the up and up. Like, you know, he's very athletic. He's got a good competitive wire to him. He can really block shots. Uh, his offense has really improved. He can make threes. Um, he can score around the basket. Now, just, you know, learning everything. and. You know, keep getting stronger and keep getting better and keep working. But no, there's, there's a lot of positives there.
last year you talked about sitting in it after the loss. Yeah. Is there a difference in having to deal with success as a coach? And a team? Sure. Yeah, no question. But I think it's also like, you know, you get a taste of it and, you know, you're able to win your league back to back years that shouldn't make you not want to, you know, try to win your league three, you know, three years in a row. Like you can't, I always say that if I walk in the locker room and somebody's upset after a win, like you're messed up, I'm not. Like, you know, you have to be able to take a win, even though it might not be perfect and feel good about it. So when you have success, you also got to be able to keep that edge. And I think that's your job as a coach is to try and do everything in your power to keep them on edge, to keep that carrot in front of them and keep fighting and trying to get better. Because we have a lot of new guys. So, but we also have, in comparison to everybody in college basketball, we have a lot of experience returning too. Like, how can you have both? But in today's landscape, we kind of do have both. Um, so maybe not as much as last year, but still to be able to have as many players as played as many minutes as we have, like um, we're, we're different. Like we're, we're, we're a lot different than other people in college basketball. Like nobody's visiting and signing five guys and having six visits or signing really with six guys and having seven visits and then not taking anybody in the spring. And so only having two guys in the portal taking two guys in the portal in four years. Nobody in college basketball is doing that except us. So you have both of those scenarios there that kind of shows you that I think we have something pretty special just in the combination of the people at Purdue and the education at Purdue to go along with great basketball tradition. What's it like having all the freshmen here at, at once? Are you really watching right. them? Well, we don't have all of them. Obviously, Jakari um, is, is trying out for, the, for Mexico um, to hopefully play. Um, in the Olympics, and then Jack Benner's been, you know, he's been sick, so he hasn't, he hasn't got going yet. So, um, it's great, you know, it's it's good to, you know, for Daniel and for, you know, for Raleigh and C.J. Cox, um, you know, all those guys, um, they're good players, you know, but sometimes it's your best doesn't come out until you know what you're doing. So I think that's our job. I've always taken the summer practices as not workouts, but as practices. So like they're getting. You know, so they understand our system, they understand what they're supposed to do. And now when you start in the fall, now you just didn't do workouts and then the real practice starts, we've already practiced. So I think that really helps out freshmen because everybody that comes in wants to play. So you've got to do everything in your power to give them that chance. And that's what the summer does for them. Obviously that, that class was supposed to be one bigger though. How impressive pointed are you in the way that the cannon catching situation? Yep. Oh, not, not at all. Like I want people that want to be here. You know, he asked out of his letter and we granted it. So it's not that big a deal. Like, so like, you know, you coach and you recruit and you go out there and you put your best foot forward. And, uh, you know, if something happened, it would be one thing, but nothing happened. It was just one of those deals where, you know, he was concerned about his role and just wanted out of his letter and then kind of went back the next day and said everything was good. And it just was like, man, why don't, this is probably better that we you know, kind of part ways if, you know, you're questioning things before things start. Like, and that's, you know, it's kind of the uncertainty. I think every freshman that comes in has those uncertain thoughts, but you know, you, you compete and earn your way into a role. Like I can't annoy a role to somebody out of thin air. You know, you, you, you walk in, you compete. Zach Eady didn't have a role. You know, Fletcher Laurie didn't have a role. They came in here and they earned what they got, and that's the way it is. But, like, I think um, more than anything, it's just the happiness of your players and the happiness of your team. Like, it's competition and it's difficult. But if right away, like, you know, you, you sense, like, hey, man, like, you know, you're starting off on the wrong foot, like, and somebody wants out of their letter, like, don't. Like, I, I think it's it's probably best to go separate ways. So we, we wish him good luck and, you know, hope everything works for him. You obviously talked a lot over the years about the importance of culture, and that's almost been what has propelled you guys right. to what you are now. Um, at the same time, you've got a guy who in, next week might be a, a lottery pick, or is going to be close to it yeah. potentially. That's cool. So what is kind of the balance between those two things? Because I would think you, you can't only be the first thing, right? There still has to be that yeah. component of, of maybe being known for developing yeah. elite players. Yeah, well, you know, your culture is something you have to work on every day. You know, it's, it's something that can go away pretty quickly. Um, but I think it starts within the, the character of the people you have on your team and the people you have on your staff. And you're not perfect. Like, everything is not, you know, going to be perfect. Um, but, you know, for us, like, we have to keep it from a highly competitive standpoint. And, and keep getting better and keeping improving along those you know those lines. But you know, if you have the right people, 
you can make a lot of mistakes and you're going to be okay. If you have the wrong people, like, it just isn't going to work. And so, like, we feel like we have a locker room right now where, you know, everybody's on the same page, they're competing, but we also know, like, everybody in that locker room is not going to play. And then when that happens and that crumbles, like, that's where you kind of find out. So don't lose your, you know, don't lose your time right now. Like in June and July and August, don't look at it like, yeah, it's just a summer workout. Like, try to get in front of guys, even though they're your teammates and you love them and you, you know, you got to go to battle with them. You got to get in front of somebody. You know, you, you got to beat the guy in front of you. So you still have to have that element along with the other things to have that culture and to have that growth more than anything. Go ahead. Do you need to be known still as a program that develops guys like Edie, yeah. that develops like upper echelon NBA talent too? Yeah, yeah. Besides, I know you want to appeal to the culture guys, the guys who are right. going to be here, but is that also an advertisement for the program? That you yeah, well, they're all culture guys, in my opinion. I think the greatest like talent that's ever played is Michael Jordan. He's a culture guy. So you can't look at culture guys like, like they're just guys that are under-recruited and tough and gritty and do the little things. Like, you know, everybody's a culture guy if you're about winning. And, and so, like, I, I think that's the piece. Zach's improvement um, led from his, you know, his physicality and how he was and how big he was, but his work that he put behind it. He put a lot of work behind it. He was very competitive. So it's a great story because, you know, that's what you want. You want to see guys get better and grow each year. But in terms of recruiting, like, now, I, I, I want to get the same guys we're getting. I don't want to get a different guy. And I think sometimes when you start to win more, like you think, okay, this is really going to propel our recruiting. And so, like, I don't make a big deal on, like, people, that, they'll go and rank them. And, like, people will say something to me and say, like, hey, I don't really have that high opinion about the people that are ranking them. Like, they've never coached. So, like, the people that know what they do, they, they shop for the groceries and they make the meal. That's what we do as college coaches. Like, you know what I mean? And so, like, these people that are ranking them, Either are people that never coached, or people that failed at coaching, or people that kind of pseudo do it. And so, like when they they rank you low, like you want to be mad at them, and they rank you high, you want to be like happy about it. And I'm neither. I could care less what they put. Like I like them. So like I think that's the point is like being able to trust yourself and trust your process, and um, you know trust your eyes and what they see, but also go and pay attention to stuff like pay attention to the, the makeup of people, but also pay attention to the people around them. I think that's an important piece, because I need help working with each one of these guys. If something goes down and there's some trouble, like I need someone to, to trust me to know that we can get together and make decisions to best help that person. Are you doing anything in the way you run your program right now to get for all the changes coming up? College sports here with the uh, revenue sharing and the scholarship. Like, I'm trying. You got, you got any advice? <laughs> now I'm going to that meeting on Monday and Tuesday with the men's basketball oversight committee, so I'll know more kind of at that time. But there's nothing to really do because you you know how it is coming out, but you don't know in what format, and you don't know how it splits, and you don't know how they handle high major programs without football. You don't know how they're going to handle gender equity you know, once everything settles, and that you know. And then how do you go about that along with the terms of likeness still? So there's still some uncertainties there of how things get, you know, you know, split up and stuff. If three guys leave last year who set a standard here for a long time, yep. how, do, how do you see your team's personality kind of? Who left? Who, who we got here? Uh, Edie, Gillis, Morton. Morton, okay, gotcha. Um, how do you see the team's kind of uh, mentality and personality switch a little bit with the new leadership, new guys yeah. coming in? I was thinking when you said leave, I was thinking transfer. Oh, sorry, no, no. Um, even though two of them did um, at the end. So to kind of clarify that, you, a lot of people put things out there. Um, so last year in the spring, I got with those guys and just said, if whoever had an extra year, like, I'll hold a scholarship for you. But if you don't want you know, me to do that, then I'm going to go use that scholarship. So, But I made him make that decision in late April and May. And then with with Ethan, you know, he didn't play as much, so he wants to play. So that makes a whole lot of sense. And then with Mason, like, you know, he's going to go to the G League or go, you know, play overseas. And I just thought financially it made a whole lot of sense for him to get in the portal just because he's such a great piece of a puzzle. And then, like, you know, he can put himself there where he can make whatever. But, like, that to me I thought was just a, a really good decision, like, on his part. Now ask me the question again. How is the team's personality – you see it transform with like Braden and Fletcher taking over. Now. Yeah. Well, they, you know, 
they were they were leaders on the team last year too. Like anytime you have the ball as much as Braden does, you got to be a leader. It's like having a freshman or a sophomore quarterback in football. Like they have to. Like they're, you have the ball so much. And so Braden, I think, has made a lot of strides in those areas, and he needs, needs to keep doing it. I think Fletch has been, you know, a, a really good leader. Uh, but anybody that's been there and played, Caleb first, Trey Kaufman ran, you know, anybody that's been there. But anybody who's also going to play a lot, no matter what their year is. And you got to, you know, you got to do your job. You got to lead by example, and that's always helpful. You mentioned earlier about not guaranteeing anybody, you know, going back to the Cannon thing, but you got Will, Caleb. Uh, Trey, guys that are going to have an opportunity that they haven't had because of the player you had down there. Right. How um, much kind of eagerness and excitement is it like, okay, now Zach's not here, let's earn our spot, let's earn our time. Right, no question. Like, you know, for us, I, I like it because I think we can play a couple different ways. Like, we can play ultimately big and Trey Coffin, like at the floor, we can go small and Trey Coffin to the five. Um, but we have a lot of different matchups there as so you take, you know, Will size or Daniel size or Raleigh size. You know, Raleigh's ability to play the four and five, Caleb's ability to play the four and five, Trey's ability to play the four and five, Cam Heidi's ability to come over and be an undersized four if need be. Um, so, like, that from a skill standpoint probably stretches us out. It gives us a little bit what Mason gave us instead of that stretch four. Um, so, like, that's what I'm excited about is those guys have those kind of opportunities, but we also have the opportunity to do some different things. And now when you look at, like, from Brian Waddell to Jakari Harris, to Miles Coleman, to Cam. Like when you look in there and you're shaping it through Braden and Fletch, and now you put those guys there, like CJ Cox has looked really impressive. And, you know, Alpha, you was watching, he can contain the dribble, he can handle the basketball, he can make a pull up, he can make a three. Just when I saw him, I was floored that the only other schools that were on him was the Ivy League. I was floored and I was seeing somebody else and I just was like, man, my attention went that way. You got a high level kid, you got a high level student, you got a high level player. And then, you know, well, to just to be able to recruit somebody for two months and get them is a beautiful thing, right? You know, so you know, we got to recruit guys for two years, but in the portal, you recruit guys for, you know, two days. It's, you know, so, so, so for us, like, we build those relationships and we do those things. So that piece of it right there, just there's, there's a lot of different ways that we can go. Like, I think we got everybody in our program right now looking to play. That's a, that's a big statement for 13 people, right? Like you're like, but it's also a great problem. I think it's, it really uh, bodes well for our staff and the job that we've done evaluating players and signing players. It was reported that there were two different proposals given to the commissioners about tournament expansion. Any thoughts on NCAA yeah. tournament expansion? I think if it happens, I really don't have too much thought. I, you know, my knee-jerk reaction is don't mess with something that's been pretty special, right? But if it does go up and there's more teams, I don't think it's going to be that more, that much more. I think it, you know it's going to be like eight more teams or four more teams or, or whatever. But to get more people in there, as long as it doesn't mess with the kind of the structure and the beauty of everything, like obviously we've had some really tough losses, but that's, that's the NCAA tournament. Like you know that's that's, that's part of it. Like you got to you know you got to play better. You got to be able to do it. But that's the that's the magic of it. And. Uh, I don't like um, mid-major teams that win their league then don't win their tournament and they don't get in. And I'm not saying that both of them should get in, but I like the league winner winning. I like him getting in the NCAA tournament. You're getting a better team in there. He's proven over 18 games who they are. And so, but what do I know? In terms of leadership temperament, I mean, Braden is a lot different than Zach was. Um, yeah. I mean, do you, which style do you prefer? I mean. Or, or is there a, I don't really prefer a style over just like I think you have to be yourself more than yeah. anything you know like just you know just be yourself and um, most people are going to say the right things but you got to be able to do them too right and then some people don't even say them as long as you do them like you're going to be okay because that's just leading by example um, but no he's okay like he, he's a little no he he's he says what he has to say I don't know if you've ever met him <laughs> So thanks guys. Thanks. Thank you.